but we are still on the track of going through our next cloud walkthrough. Uh, so Jack was able to put together some notes on the groupware. I think, what was it, last episode, you went over kind of built-in apps. And so this episode, group, I'm going to talk about groupware, uh, which is, it, it boils down to four or five uh, applications, which end up being, you know, mail, being a mail client, uh, calendar, contacts, and they offer something similar to Camboard, which is their deck service. Essentially, you log in, and I think these come out of the box ready to be enabled. I want to walk through kind of each service. Uh, I think really the ben- the main benefit you get from all of these is you have your own data. Main takeaway is that you you have your own data, right? It's not Facebook data. It's not Apple's data. It's not Google's data. I just go to, you know, bang there. With calendar, you can create and share multiple calendars. You can integrate calendar resources uh, with WebCal. And then you can book re- book resources through a busy view or plan a talk meeting. I, I didn't talk on talk. It's down there as a uh, group where it's kind of in there um, with calendar. The one thing I really like is being able to create multiple calendars. Uh, this is what I usually do on my own calendars, you know, a birthday calendar, a holidays calendar, you know, a personal calendar, a work calendar. And that way I'm able to split out and view every day in how I'm going to kind of treat the day, if that makes sense, versus having a calendar that is booked, you know, day to day, minute to minute with every single thing. I mean, that's great sometimes, but it's to me, it's overwhelming. I just know it is overwhelming to look at a calendar that is booked, you know, eight to midnight. What I do find helpful is I can import my work calendar into Nextcloud, and I can also import my Canboard calendar into Nextcloud. And actually, probably the opposite of you, because I, I love seeing both of those on one, and then I see where my workday stops and, like, where my uh, my personal day, my workout session, and then, like, you know, Bible yeah. study or yeah. whatever begins because they're on two separate calendars, right? Uh, and, yeah. and by that, I mean, like, they're highlighted with two separate colors. They're easily distinguishable. It says this is your Camboard calendar. This is your that. office yeah, calendar. Same board. Yeah. yeah. Same page. Yeah. yeah. And then I can hide one if I don't care about it. If I'm just looking at, you know, what. That's, that's what so that's what I do. I split it up and I say, hey, I don't want to see any work after, you know, 5, 530. I'm just yeah. turn off the count, turn off that view. What am I, you know, what's going on? Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I did want to say I'm intentionally not touching on any kind of mobile integrations right now that will come later yeah a whole separate uh talk on that i was gonna leave webcal uh for the next episode i think uh, yeah we talked about but just notice i guess this is just to let everyone know inform everybody that it is out there yeah the integration and the webcal integration is the out webcal there. integration yeah you can uh basically as it's applicable here is that you can import calendars as we were talking about you can also export calendars from nextcloud diving into contacts uh with nextcloud contacts you can track your birthdays okay you can do that with calendar uh you can share your address books with your team and you can sync your contacts with phones and other devices um Hmm, i wonder where that would have come in handy (laughs) uh that's good for mobile okay well we're not going to dive into that the one thing i will say with contacts was um I was recently trying to pull all my contacts off my phone. Um, I have an iPhone. And honestly, it's very difficult. I, I I I think you can link it up to Nextcloud and back up to Nextcloud. I didn't get it working the way I wanted. Hmm. That makes sense. So uh, I think it was because it was already using something else. Sure enough, I think it was using Hotmail or something. Um, so sure enough, I log into my Hotmail account. I'm like, what's going on here? They got all my contacts from my phone. I'm like, okay, well, let me just export this and delete everything. So sure enough, export it. You can just pull it as a CSV. Um, then I had to download this fancy widget tool from, uh, GitHub to turn the CSV into Cal card or oh, it's like okay. a, yeah, yeah. A uh, card dev, card, 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 card dev. Yeah. yeah. So it's card dev. 
and then card dev into Nextcloud. A little bit of a process, kind of. That's 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 a fun kind of stuff. Like yeah, that's... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and to be fair, if that's something that anyone were to run across where they're having a similar issue, that's where you call us and we're like, oh, we're the nerds who know how to do that. We, so... Oh, I already <laughs> I did this once before. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It exports as a CSV. It's a pain. In, pain. It's a pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. Um... So no, that's funny. That's funny that you had to do that. I actually had some kind of setup issues too. Uh, I I don't remember where I documented it. Probably in my blog or whatever. But yeah, that that was that was fun to do. What it also integrates with, and if we can just skip down there for a second, but it also Cardaf, right? It it it's a it's a context um, format, which is a standard like a web standard it'll store you know name phone number and also like email address right which comes yeah. in super yeah. handy when i want to sync to my desktop email client right so i totally. actually have my desktop email client synced to nextcloud with my contacts and also nextcloud has their mail application so you can just we can we can roll right into to that because that yeah, is we'll exactly right where it. where context comes in handy Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So with Nextcloud, you can, I have some bullets here, but it's a mail client in your web browser. Yeah. So instead of going to, you know, every, so you have multiple email accounts, you log into each service, you know, we'll just say, you know, Yahoo, Gmail, Fastmail, you know, any kind of webmail, ser- you know, client service, any kind of just web service there or provider, you, instead of logging into each one, you basically can go to Nextcloud and say, all right, I have all my inboxes here. Now, it's an option. It's absolutely an option. I'd recommend it for on the go per se, but for me using a desktop, I just do, I do like my mail, just built in mail client. Do you that, use whatever the Mac book has for you? Or? It, that's okay. what, that's what's there. Okay. Uh, but I do have Thunderbird, uh, on my okay. other desktop. And I'm actually, I, lo- I actually, I love Thunderbird. Oh man, dude, like, I'm, I'm a mail spring proponent. I tried, at this mail, point. I tried mail spring. It, I don't know what it was. It was just, and even from even me saying this from Thunderbird, Mailspring felt clunky. Mailspring felt clunky. Hmm. I don't know if it was just the version I had. It was. Is it an Element app? Electron. Electron. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I feel the Java. I, I don't know if it was something about the rendering that was just. Hmm. I had a couple. I was moving boxes. I don't know if it was my seat. It could have been. It could have been user error. I'm not going to sit here and say it wasn't. I was moving a couple boxes, dialog boxes, and I moved them over, and the text wouldn't show up. And this happened a couple times, and I said, "Nope, Thunderbird. I'm defaulting back to Thunderbird." All right. Yeah, that's uh, fair. That's fair. You gave it a shot. That's that's all I can ask yeah. for. Thunderbird gets it done. Now, this this is what I would say is that on the go kind of mobile. Um, option you're able to just sign into next cloud and say hey you know what i need every inbox and there it is um yeah i would recommend if anyone's still using the web interface for their provider to not um totally (laughs) make that exact same recommendation (laughs) use a desktop client use a mobile client uh and and sync all of your inboxes down to that client so that you're you're using your one client yeah, for all, all this your, yeah, right. way right. easier way easier and then just next cloud just offers a way to do that on a server it's like easy. through it's the through easy. the browser so like that would be that would be probably my third way of accessing mail if i didn't have my uh client uh desktop client if i didn't have my mobile client then i'd go to my next cloud instance now I believe what you came across was that a lot of mail providers like for you to use an application yeah. password yeah. rather than your login password. So even for MailSpring and so even going back to Thunderbird, some applications uh, have like a pop up where they say, hey, all right, you can log in using this service it pops up saying, hey, log in via, you know, however. Let me let me back up and 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 kind of dive into application passwords. So just just to sp- set expectations, right? Yeah. Because you set up your email client once and you're done, right? So you go through that hassle and you're like, you look back and you're like, man, that was a hassle, and then not learn anything from it, right? So what? Because you do it so quickly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So the so the first thing to know is that you can have a login password to like your your Hotmail or your Fastmail. 
or whatever, what what, what have you. Yeah, yeah. Then the login password is going to be separate from the password that you actually supply to the client. You're you're gonna you're gonna go into Hotmail and you're gonna say, hey, by the way, I have a new client that I want to start receiving email. And Hotmail is going to say, all right, great, but we're not going to let you use that login password because that would be insecure. Your default password, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you log in with a separate password. Here it is, and it's going to generate a password for you. And then you take that and you give that password to the mail client. So that's that's what an application password is. And a lot of email services are going to use that. Um, a, lot, a lot of them that a lot of them are going to use it. So just be yeah. aware. Um, yeah. So basically I ran into that when I was setting it up because it's exactly what you said. How often do you set up a mail client? You don't, you set it up usually once and it just works TM. Um, but basically I had, I was setting it up and ran into that. Uh, I think it was fast mail said, Hey, no, 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 do not use your login password. Go in, Log in, generate an app password, and just use the app password. So it was easy enough to get up and running. Um, the one note I'll make on Nextcloud Mail, uh, similar to what I would compare to Deck to Canboard, is that you're not getting the full feature rich uh, client email. You kind of have to search around for what you want to do, which more or less could be user error, right? Um, but Overall, it does. You're able to read, read your email. Um, does yeah. its job. Uh, deck. I don't want to dive too deep into. Basically, it's yeah, it's a Kanban style task board. Um, you're able to drag and drop cards, assign them to team members. So I guess anyone in Nextcloud, you're able to assign it to, and then um, you're able to. This is it. It more or less seemed like a checklist, uh, and to do list than it did a board um everything was kind of recognized as actually a list did it have swim lanes that i had i'd have to go i'd have to go back and check when i went and uh opened it up played with a little bit created a couple tasks created a couple lists i did everything kind of fell under default and i think that's why i said it felt like a to-do list more than anything yeah because i i see a lot of other board software that's that's not specifically kanban right so you're you're looking at Trello or Jira or what have you, they underutilize swim lanes by default. And I, that's concerning to me because swim lanes are very powerful uh, and they, they, they help a lot. So I would be, I'd be interested to see if, if deck has that functionality. Yeah. And then the last group where application here uh, is talk, which I know you had said you've used I, I do remember experimenting with this once and then never touching it again. Never. Yeah, I just never. Yeah. Um, well, especially uh, since there's so many different ways to communicate, to to do, you know, calls. Oh, my gosh. There's a, a thousand messaging apps out there. There's a thousand ways to call somebody now. It's anymore. Well, I, RTC yeah, I, is I, out there. I think what um, you want to do, though, is... What is the benefit of using one over the other, especially if you have to break it up, right? right? The the cool thing about Talk is that it's integrated with Nextcloud. So if you're giving presentations that you have stored in Nextcloud, you can present using Talk. Like you, yeah, you, it has yeah. those types of integrations that are are so close knit because it is developed in the same ecosystem. That was the big one that stuck out to me was that, you know, being able to present over and web. I I think they called it web conferencing, was the other big one. Nextcloud provides end-to-end encrypted audio and video calls, uh, easy screen sharing, kind of what Andrew was talking about, and for web conferencing, and then the again what you're also talking about the integration with Nextcloud files and other groupware. So, con you, you're able to call your contacts within Nextcloud uh, that are on Nextcloud using Talk. That's all I had for groupware. The one other tip I had for groupware and just apps in general before we dive into you know full third-party applications was when and we're going to work on this is when we upgrade our Nextcloud instance sometimes Nextcloud apps also need to be updated before they're 
before you're able to see them. We actually them again. we actually merged this. This is actually a oh, functionality okay. that's already there. But yeah, so in the event that this happens, it's good to in know. In the event you're running into an issue where, hey, my the calendar app isn't showing up. Hey, the contacts app isn't there anymore. Hey, talk isn't showing up. Any of these apps aren't showing up. It's a matter of going in and in the applications page and updating the application itself to match with your version of Nextcloud. Now we we have a patch out there that uh, will automatically update uh, them for you. But in the event that you're still running into new issue, that's the first place to check. Obviously, we have the documentation out there. Um, I'm going to point right to it. Um, but that was something of note as well as the app passwords, which we already touched on. But that's everything I have for group where is there anything else that stuck out maybe that i missed anything you wanted to point to no no thanks for putting this together uh it was it was good to uh get an overview of what's available and how it might work yeah yep absolutely um i think that's the goal i think we talked about uh for both the podcast and the documentation basically just pointing you know there's upstream documentation out there but we're here to provide you hey this is what you can do with the service with you know so with nextcloud and groupware 